next case I, I will I will tell you is ultimately a request to take 13 acres of property that is largely zoned conservation and rezone it to a place to where they can have livestock on the property as well as um, potentially another single family dwelling on it. It's a large property. What makes this rezoning complicated is the comp plan calls for conservation. The existing water resources are a mixture of wetlands as well as floodplain uh, and literally just um, kind of a floodway where you have a ditch that runs not only to the north of the property but kind of the central part of that property as well. So there's a lot of water resources on it. With that, the applicants um, have worked with us on trying to see what they can or cannot do with this property. And ultimately, at the end of the day, what you have is uh, various recommendations from staff. Planning staff tried to take into account some of the concerns you're going to hear from uh, the surrounding neighbors in just a few minutes, as well as what the neighbors, uh, or I'm sorry, as well as what the applicants wanted to do with the property. And that's where planning staff came up with a combination of RA and conservation. With that, I mean, the only developments we've had in this past week are we did have some pictures submitted to us uh, this morning. We tried to package those for you and send those out to you so you could try to look at those before the meeting. You should have some copies around you if you wanted to see those. But ultimately, they were so large we could not email all of them. But I do anticipate um, a gentleman speaking in opposition to present you more about those pictures in just a few minutes. So while I peel back and, and try to get this technology up to speed, Ultimately, that's the recommendation on this case is they've asked for all EA. I've tried to put forth a compromise of RA and conservation, and I think it's with you tonight uh, for the public hearing portion. Any questions for staff on this request? Commissioner Folsom? <laughs> I understand the combination zone and where are the boundaries of these? Yeah, I was to... sorry, y'all. Um, my my proposal was for the to make the the boundaries of RA next to the residences because if you have been to the property, you'll be able to see where they are using the kind of the property behind the houses for um, the livestock and the existing agricultural uses. Plus, that's also the drier portions of the property. So I would take everything to the west of the wetland RA and everything to the east of the wetland remain conservation. So that was my intent, was to keep the wetlands and the floodplain conservation where they were so together. On this map is the wetlands, the drain line part? Yes, yes sir. So this, this portion here would be able to be rezoned RA and then the portion inside this wetland boundary, which is also floodplain, would remain conservation. So the property that is kind of driest next to their property would would allow for the additional uses. How are we going to delineate that? They have paid um, a wetlands delineator to delineate the property. Um, I've spoken to that delineator. Um, he is a trustworthy and re reputable professional. He has given that information to the surveyor, but I do not have the updated survey. But based on verbal comments from him, it is close to what we have in our in our packet. I understand that you mean to work, but I, I have a real concern about doing things based on the presence or absence of weapons mm -hmm. at the current time. Mm -hmm. Five sure. years from now, does, does our zoning change because the weapons have, have receded? No, sir. Or, or increased? It would, it would, if you move forward with that condition, my hopes would be we would, be get, we would get an updated survey between now and the county commission district and the county commission meeting so we can firmly plant that line. Otherwise, that is what we have today. It could certainly take more time to say, Jason, we'd really like that survey. I, I want that survey, I, I just, I don't have it from that surveyor. I just, I mean, from from my standpoint, mm -hmm. if I see this property at 10 years zone like this, zoning-wise, it may be fine mm -hmm. for your uses, but from a marketability standpoint, mm -hmm. it creates all kinds of issues. Yes, sir. I mean, so, I mean, it, unless we have, in my mind, you parcel this out into two parcels, you zone one, one way, one way, mm -hmm. and be done with it, and not based on a weapons designation, but just drawing lines that basically takes in what you're wanting. Sure. We, we, we considered that, and one of the hurdles they would have to get through if we parceled it out, which would make it cleaner. I'm not saying that's not a good decision and option, 
is they have 60 feet of road frontage to the south, but they don't have 60 feet to the north. And so we truly only have a road frontage for one piece. So that's why we, we shy away from that. They could get that with a variance, but ultimately they currently only have enough road frontage for one property. The way this was cut out over decades of very interesting deed work was they, they kind of were left with a commissioner, a less, you know, less than, less than, less than, and this is what you have to write. But that would be a hurdle. You, we could do that. It's just they would, they would need to solve that road frontage issue to get two more pieces in here. One solution is if it is RA, um, if you go all RA or all EA, you could do that with family ties and use an easement. Um, so far, I've been dealing with Mrs. Callis, the property owner, and then her son, Mr. Wilmer. So that's a, a distant option, but at least gives them some hope, maybe with an easement. Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Do we know how much area is actually needed for their livestock? I, I think their preference is to have all 13 acres. I think if you look at what they're using now, based on what we can see from the street, and the applicants are here, and they'll probably be able to address that when they come up, but. I would say they're probably looking at at least two, two acres to use maybe what they already have, um, based on my estimates. But the applicants will probably be more accurate to say we want to expand an acre, we want to contract. But I'd say right now they're using one to two acres. So based on the existing information that we have, and it's probably shown in the survey, but I can't see it. Mm -hmm. What is the area that's outside of the wetlands? area but on the south side so yes, the area adjacent to the property that they currently own um and i'm do you, do that you, pocket yes ma'am i know what you're talking about I, i'd say that's an acre to an acre and a half if the entire parcel is 13 i think your dry acres are around 11. so the largest of which being to the southwestern corner which is about an acre to an acre and a half so you mean your floodplain acre. If you look on that map, the diagonal lines are the wetlands. The kind of haze is the floodplain. So that's what that's what happens on that on that shade is the wetlands are further to the east, and the the floodplain extends well beyond their property over Alabama. Can you show us with the with the point here on your? Yes, sir. If you look, um, this shaded area is floodplain. The floodplain goes from here all the way outside the screen. The hash area here, that's the wetland area. It, it just is a little complicated because they overlap. They overlap in large part due to the ditch that runs to the north side of the property in an east-west direction and probably right through the middle or portion kind of a north-south direction. And that's depicted on the survey. Yes. Mm -hmm. When you say conservation use, are you telling us in conservation use from a county's perspective? From a zoning perspective. I know what you're saying, sir. From a, uh, is, it not, is conservation use not allowed for uh, cows to be to graze on? You, you cannot have livestock in our conservation zoning. In conservation tax use, you certainly you can have agricultural uses in that, but this yeah. is a conservation zoning district, which is more restrictive. Okay. All right. So what just um, to follow up on that, what can they do? What are, what are, what's permissible in conservation? Ma'am, it is, um, you have very limited retail uses that are normally associated with like campground type uses. It is very restrictive because we don't have a lot of it in the county and typically you only see it where you have a large amount of, kind of water resources coming together. Um, it used to be called flood hazard mm -hmm. zoning district. Mm -hmm. And we didn't maintain that flood hazard title. We called it, we rolled it over into a conservation district. I could try to go through and just list them out, but limit camping, um, you know, outdoor recreation, maybe type uses, um, but not not livestock, not single family. Oh, gosh. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Let me go disarm the building. Please. <laughs> <laughs> Well, <coughs> what was my 
Jason. He yes. can comment on this when he gets back up here. But, well, you know, it, it seems to me that two zoning classifications on this property is a distinction without any practical effect. Yes. Because unless you put a fence, if you're going to have cows on, on the front part, which is allowed, unless you put a fence down the zoning boundaries, mm -hmm. yeah. those cows are going to go all over that property yeah. anyway. Yeah, that was my point. So, what, what's the point? The RA zoning classification, the restrictions in it require you to fence the livestock. And it requires you to have a buffer of 150 feet between the R10 zoning and the livestock. So if you properly enforce the <coughs> fence condition, then they would be required to build a fence, which I think they would be willing to do. Um, because it would allow them to find the livestock. So, I mean, honestly, I mean, you, you can see this and you know this. I mean, we really tried to find... So do they have 150 feet on the southern end there where, That's what I was where not it's dry that. from the R10? It, it will be close, but yes. I, I believe how so. Much, how much usable area for livestock would that leave? I, I think an acre and a half to two... Based on the current wetland line and my calculations, I think they'd have an acre and a half to two acres. Jason, I would, uh, I, before we, I, I don't know where y'all headed with this, but I would recommend we table this and get more information. This is not, in my mind, not ready for any yeah. sort of action. Yeah, I mean, I, I, how many cows, Jason, could you have on an acre and a half? I mean, that's really up to, up to them, but I, I do not think they would have, they could have very many healthy cattle on an acre and a half. I'm thinking one major. one to two, but they can comment on the type of loss that they want. Uh, why I, I'm a little bit at a loss here, mm -hmm. and help me on this on the on the wetland. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of wetland in in Lyons County. Mm -hmm. This this shows up on the, the maps as, as wetland. Mm -hmm. What's different about this and allowing a, a farmer that sure. owns the whole property to fence the entire property and <coughs> let the cows roam on the entire property? Commissioner, I mean, that's, that's a valid question. To me, the answer I would give you is the, the comp plan takes this area and leans it more towards park recreation conservation rather than ag. So that's why I tried to balance more of a, okay, well, Maybe you can't have all 13 of <coughs> ag, but we can have some to allow you to use it. The truth is, is I, I sat down with the engineer and tried to ask him, what can you do in these wetlands? Because if they can't have livestock in the wetlands, then we're really wasting our time. Yeah. Um, to me, his guidance was you can have livestock in the wetlands provided you're using good, good management practices for them. Uh, yeah. You cannot fill dirt in the wetlands and you That's can actually correct. do some pruning and clearing in the wetlands provided that you do it without heavy machinery. That's correct. Um, but you definitely run up into, and you know this, permits from the Corps of Engineers at a very close point. So he didn't present any concerns about them not being able to use the wetlands for livestock. That strictly in my mind comes from the guidance in the comp plan to say be protective of this area. So this is in the comp plan in a conservation area not an ag area, and that's why I tended to lean towards trying to compromise for both. What if there's a lot of uh, conservation area in the county that stands in right now that you've got cows roaming all the way through? Mm -hmm. That's what's disturbing to me about this a little bit right sure. here. Sure. Uh, now, I can understand if you're going down within 30 feet of that um, of the creek or body mm -hmm. of water or whatever and try and clear within a certain area down there to put a fence up. Mm -hmm. It was my understanding that if you wanted to leave it alone as it was and you wanted to weed through that uh, area mm -hmm. and put up wire mm -hmm. using trees or whatever. Or like a trail. A, fence, path. Yeah, a trail. Mm -hmm. To kind of isolate them to a particular area but yeah. allow them to, to roam the entire area. I've never seen that as an issue in the past but there. We may have something new that's come up. Jason, Jason, with the concern that commissioners have up here, we need some additional uh, documentation to make a good, educated motion mm -hmm. on this thing. Uh, I think at this time, without any further discussion, I will see if somebody would like to motion for a tabling of this item for this work, for this public meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, sir, I understand. I wish I had it. I just, 
I've only heard from one of those professionals, not the surveyor, and to me, you want to see it. I think if we walked out there, you would see the flags. I just can't have a document to show it because I don't have it yet. What, what, what document? Do we have a motion? Can I make a comment for make before we... Com Commissioner Willis, yes, sir. I make a motion. I make a motion that we table this until... Second. There's going to be a discussion after that. Yeah, I have a motion for Commissioner McClendon to table this, this item. I have a second for Commissioner Wiles. Any discussion on this motion before yes. we vote? Commissioner yes. Willis. What I would like to see is for you to check with the um, ASC office or whatever mm -hmm. that works directly hand in hand with the uh, conservation folks. Yes, sir. As well as the Corps of Engineers and see what their comments are on this because I mean I think we need to be think need to think about that one a little bit. We're not trying to change the, the wetland as it exists. All we're asking I think is allowing cows or horses or whatever to roam on that mm -hmm. and graze on that land, which does not take down any trees or whatever. You can get a clarification on that. But that's the farm man that's already dealt with it before. Yeah. Commissioner, I'm assuming that's table to the next planning commission in February. We got a vote. Yeah. Yeah. We, we have a motion and we have a second. And, and I've done this. Commissioner Willis, do you have any further discussion? That's it, sir. If not, I will take if you, all the, in favor of the of the uh, table for 30 days, please say the top, raise your right hand. Ms. Carmella is unanimous, 8 0. Mr. Chairman, can we require, as a matter of rule, that you have to attend the work session to be able to talk at the night session? <laughs> Do I have a motion? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Mr. Folsom. Yes, 